the wonderful thing about science is it's self-renewing. Okay, every question you answer raises five new ones, half of which are even more interesting than what you were doing before. So my, my hope is to just keep going deeper and deeper into the forest, uh, getting the occasional surprise that takes you in an unexpected direction. And I think that's what keeps me going, is just the sheer unpredictability of what you're going to find. I've always considered myself a basic researcher. I don't come to work in the morning thinking about how am I going to create new drugs? How am I going to cure heart disease? How am I going to cure schizophrenia? That's not the intent. However, uh, it's often the outcome. What drives me is just an innate curiosity. But because I'm a physician, everything I do is informed by a certain sensibility, which is once you learn something, well, what are the implications of this for human biology and for therapeutics? And it's, it's not an exercise that I go through consciously. It's just part of who I am. I happen to believe that the, the really fundamental, game-changing discoveries that can alter medicine come out of the basic research laboratory. For example, all of my early work through the 70s and 80s was about developing techniques that I needed uh, which did not then exist, to study the receptors, to t then isolate them, find out what they were, find out something about their structure and how they were regulated. That was the goal. But immediately the techniques that we developed were appropriated, as they should be, by the pharmaceutical industry, and it totally transformed the way drugs are developed. Now you could put these cloned receptors into cells and you could screen hundreds of thousands or millions of drugs. Uh, without ever looking at a physiological response. Yeah, that was a unintended consequence. I mean, it, was it surprising me? No, it was obvious once we developed it. But that wasn't why I was doing it. Uh, I was doing it because I wanted to study the receptors and I needed to develop those techniques to do it. I'm terribly spoiled. Uh, I've been a, an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute since 1976. I don't know how many years that is. It's a lot of years. Being a Hughes investigator gives you a remarkable level of freedom. The Institute doesn't fund research projects. This is a fundamental difference that a lot of people don't understand. I'm not tied down to do any particular thing. So whenever I get an idea that may be a little wacky or a little crazy or that just came out of the last experiment, we just do it. But I know I have many colleagues, uh, most probably, who whenever I'm discussing with them something and we come up with a new idea, they'll say, hey, that's cool. Let's write a grant for that. And it just never occurs to me, I mean, at that early stage, to write a grant. You try it. And that kind of freedom, it's a blessing as a scientist. Yeah, only two kids still if 80 to 90 percent of what you're doing is working, you're playing it way too safe. And you're not taking on the kind of big, important questions that you really should be. If I review what's going on and I start seeing that about half of what we're working on is working, that's too safe for me, and I'll, uh, I'll up the ante a bit. And that's really true. Uh, I really think that if you're going to take on big questions, you, you need to be prepared to, uh, to fail. And so that's one of the main things that I do in my yearly planning, is to review the previous year and make sure that uh, we're failing enough. Uh, it sounds crazy, but in fact that's what I do. Wow, look at this! Oh my god! <laughs> Congrats! Wow. Congratulations! Thank you. When did Song? you? When did you know? Around 5 a.m. <laughs> Get everybody in here. I'll yeah. tell you the story.